part of this morning's show. We're trying to find out what you do when no one is looking. I'll be honest, I'm hoping all the pervs who might be tempted to ring in are watching Jeremy Vile on the other side. We shall see. Uh, Dermot Gell and Mark's secret habits in a moment. Yours too on the usual number, please. 0207 173 555. I can't deny it. I don't want to deny it. This phone-in is one of Eric's inspired ideas, no doubt encouraged by members of our loyal and wonderful audience. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you do then when no one's looking? Does each and every one of us, uh, does even Prime Ministers in waiting, have a deep-seated need to do something, something we might not want oh. the rest of the world oh. to know about oh. when we're alone? Oh. And eat it! Oh. Makes you proud we have him as PM, doesn't it? <laughs> Boogies! Uh, now, I suspect we all do because we all live under a huge weight of social pressure and expectation, don't we? And if you think you can get away with something, then the temptation is there to have a go. The thrill we might get caught only increasing the pleasure we feel. Like David Cameron, who also picks his hooter, Paris Hilton scratching her camel toe, or Natalie Portman's <laughs> pant-up bum sticky problems. <laughs> There's even a website dedicated to the, to the very subject in which L Lolita V confessed to looking at and then adjusting her boobs. I'll be honest, if I had them, I'd do exactly the same. Uh, someone called Aspoto, who confessed to urinating in other people's plant pots, while D.B. D. Bowles, or D.B. Owls, enjoys dancing naked. So what do you do when you think no one's looking? And have you ever had one of your private moments spoiled by an unexpected interruption? <laughs> I'm... <laughs> Dermot, I'm going to start with you. Why not? You're the nearest. Because I can feel your embarrassment and shame from here, so it must be something good. I'm not going to admit to anything. <laughs> The whole point is... Down in your garden shed? <laughs> the, whole, <laughs> the whole point is, you're alone, and I'm certainly not going to admit to anything <laughs> on national television, no. Now, Gail, you've got a cracker, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> so the rumour goes. <laughs> <laughs> damn it! She can damn it to me. <laughs> um, I take pictures of strangers. How do you do it? Just go like that, pretend I'm texting someone and go... And then I play this game when I see and I make up really bad leaky likey. So if I see someone that looks like a really bad Elton John, then I go, look at that, bad Elton John. But then I delete them, so don't worry anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and then on a normal level, I play SingStar on my own. Do you? Yeah. That's quite sad. That is really sad. <laughs> but your friends phone go, what are you doing? I go, playing SingStar. Oh, who's round? No one. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> uh, karaoke, by the way, for the young initiative. Sorry, karaoke. Uh, and, uh, and finally, Mark, what about you? I've been really trying to think about this. It's a good question, actually, because I feel pretty free and I do I'm a bit like, well, not that I eat it, but I, you know, I'll do things in public that are, you know, yeah, I just, I'm pretty free. But I've been known to write poetry. I, I like writing poetry. Yeah, we, yeah. But I've done that in front of people because of a coffee table or coffee house. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not embarrassed about that. But I draw. And with crayon, with um, charcoal, and they're really bad drawings. It's shocking. Everyone laughs. Of, of people you see. No, no, just, just, uh, just. I don't know what they are. It's hard to know. What is that? I don't know. Uh, does, does anybody here? Does anybody? So put, I draw. Does anybody put their hands down their pants under yeah. their belt? Yeah. It is peculiarly comforting, don't you think? But when, when you're on your Stop own. Stop looking at me like that, Dylan. For God's sake, I'll hit you with your own book, and you wouldn't want that, would you? <laughs> is that? Is that when you're on your own? You do that in the tube. I mean, when you're on your own. You're... <laughs> Where, when you're on your own, you go a bit further, don't you think? Oh, no. <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, I'm too tired. I've got a young girlfriend. Uh, um, <laughs> Kirsty, what do you do? I make myself cry in the mirror. <laughs> what? That's <laughs> weird. What, like, you make yourself cry. <laughs> Is it like self-harm? No, because I used to um, I used to be an actress and I used to do a lot of acting and, and that was one thing I used to struggle with. And I've about mastered it now. Try so, it, give us a bit. No, I wouldn't. Tomorrow, I if should, we bring a mirror I'll in. Do it tomorrow. Yeah? Tomorrow? <laughs> tomorrow. Well, your big acting, your tears on TV. Tears on TV tomorrow with her. Uh, yeah, Kirsty, we like that. What about on the phones? We've got Linda on line one. Linda, good morning. Oh, good morning, Matthew. What do you do when no one's looking? I actually talk to myself. I don't just talk to myself, I argue with myself. I have massive, great big arguments with myself because I'm, I'm the only one that ever thinks that I'm right. <laughs> 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 but a few weeks ago, what happened? I didn't realise the front door was open. 
And I was really having a big row with myself, and my neighbour was standing outside the front door, <laughs> thought that I was in trouble inside, and she was going to go and call the police. <laughs> <laughs> That's a row with myself, you know. Nice one, thank you. Let's have another. Lisa, a great one on line two. Morning, Lisa. Morning. What do you do when no one's looking? Um, well, I, I, I was outed by the postman, but um, I used to wear my wedding dress to do the cleaning. And um, I was completely in the throes of uh, hoovering the uh, stairs and the front doorbell went for um, a recorded delivery. And I went and opened the front door completely in full regalia of... Um, With a hoover in your hand. Or yeah, indeed a vacuum cleaner. And, and completely, you know, it looked like I was about to go and march down the aisle. And uh, the, uh, the postman just went, oh, look at you, congratulations. <laughs> and I was just like, you know... What, on a recorded delivery, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> At least the nice thing is now, Lisa, you can wear your wedding dress, carry on with your vacuuming, and there's no chance a postman's going to knock on your door. <laughs> because they're all on strike, or will be soon. If she's married, that'd be really sad if she wasn't uh, married. Uh, we, we haven't got enough time to hear from Eric, because we're, we're done in it. Oh. So I'm sorry, mate. Oh. So we'll have to save your secret, twisted little habits for another time. Another time. Oh, good. Now... Oof. For you. That's it. Beaten by the clock once again. Trisha's up next. Uh, first, though, we've got to say goodbye to the lovely Dermot. Great to see you, as per usual, my Great friend. And uh, do check out his inspiring heavyweight book, Planting. It would make a wicked Christmas present. It really, really would. Uh, Tartu, DeMarc and Gail, they're back tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, show your appreciation. It's wonderful panel.